and welcome. It's Psychic Cynthia here, Spiritual Psychic Cynthia Killian. And welcome to today's video forecast. This is your video forecast for Friday, August 14th, 2020. And actually this forecast is for the week ahead. So that would be for the week, uh, I guess that'd be beginning on August 17th and going until August 23rd. Um, but I like to, you know, put it out a couple days early, so hopefully you'll, you'll be able to watch it uh, this weekend so you can get the info about the week ahead. So some highlights for this video forecast for the week ahead. Actually, I want to start with this weekend in case you are able to catch it this weekend. And just a little quick review that this weekend we're having Uranus is going retrograde. Uh, that's on this Saturday. I guess that would be the 15th of August, 2020. And uh, as far as retrogrades go, this is really a more gentler one uh, because it can give us a rest from needing to focus on intense change and, you know, lots of surprises and things like that, which surprises can be fun and then sometimes they can be unsettling. So um, it's a time to rest from that and to deal with all the changes and disruptions of the recent past. Uh, and this is a much longer transit. Uh, it goes on for about five months, so we'll have some time to adjust. I did talk a lot more about Uranus retrograde in last week's forecast in the second part of that video. So if you want, you can go back and uh, review that about some things to avoid. Um, mainly, you know, I, I think the, the main drawback to this thing happening this weekend, this Uranus retrograde shift, um, and remember it's going to be for five months, so it's not like it's just happening Saturday and it's over. And, but right around the time that this is happening, and you know, it's for two weeks before and two weeks after I've noticed there, there can be, a, it's like Uranus gets sort of more active than normal, and there can be some strange, strange things happening, strange unexpected surprises, and, and actually the opposite of what the retrograde means, but it's like there's a flare up of Uranus energy, and um, I, I find that for some people, I mean, especially if you're under a lot of stress, which many of us are right now because of the collective stuff, um, so if you're under a lot of stress, right around the time Uranus goes retrograde, that tends to spike, and you might, you know, act out your frustrations in unwise, impulsive ways, so just don't do that, okay? I don't know else to say but watch out for that and don't do that if you can avoid it um, you know take a breath take a beat if you're feeling frustrated if you're feeling like you want to lash out just take a step back and pause right now would be a good time for that this weekend especially okay um, and really the next two weeks ahead because it takes us a while to adjust to the retrograde but um, now for those of you who maybe aren't feeling the stress and, and actually maybe if you're meditating more if you're you know nurturing your spiritual path more I don't mean just talking about doing those things but if you're actually doing it if you're actually spending time tuning into spirit tuning into your inner guidance um, and doing those activities which uplift and nurture you you know the fun the, the path of your soul whatever that is because Uranus is tied into the path of the soul uh, so when it goes retrograde, as it will this weekend, it's telling us to go deeper. Deeper on our own path of the soul. You know, instead of starting new things relating to the path of the soul, it says go deeper with what you've already started. Okay, I already covered some of that in last week's video, but I did want to touch on that again. I think it's still a highlight. Um, so, but it's not really happening in the week ahead. So in the week ahead, uh, what we're focused on here is they're, they're, they're basically solar lunar shifts that are important more more in the solar and lunar shifting realm than in the planetary uh, so on Tuesday and I believe that would be uh, when it's here August 18th we're going to have a new moon and that's going to be at 26 degrees Leo so it's a late Leo new moon and you know the Leo energy is so lovely in, in many ways because it's a it's a fun, light-hearted energy, or at least it can be. It's kind of larger than life, too. Uh, it can go over the top, but there is a, you know, a relaxation to it, or a pleasure, a pleasure principle. With the, the Leo, and it's a very romantic sign, and 
or can be at least. Uh, so we've been having an emphasis on that anyway with the sun in Leo the last few weeks. And now we'll have this new moon in Leo. So that will continue this chapter four, you know, for about another month. Um, well, I should be more specific for about four weeks where starting on Tuesday, it's a time to plant new seeds um, for the new beginnings in the realm of your, your creative self, in the realm of your romantic self. So um, how do you express yourself ethically? Where do you want to be a creator or a leader? And not just a leader, like a boring kind of leader, but an inspired leader, a creative leader. Uh, Leo is about uh, having flair, you know, having style, you know, where do you have that in yourself or where do you want to have that and it is about the creative impulse the artistic impulse of you know whether that's you know because you write you write fiction stories say or maybe you play music or you dance or you know maybe you're a fashionista you know or you express yourself creatively through your hair i mean obviously i don't because i don't really do anything with my hair <laughs> uh, then again i don't have to um so but maybe that's your your thing, you know. You're maybe you're uh, into makeup, or maybe you're into interior decorating. Maybe that's where you uh, put your unique signature and mark upon the world. I mean, I think that's what we're always looking at when when we see these vibrations of Leo. It's it's an opportunity for us to put our mark on the world, to create, and it's also tied into procreation for those who are wishing to conceive. So. Uh, maybe this will be a good time for that. I don't know, in the week ahead. Um, some things to think about. Think about where you want to be more legendary, more epic, more expressive, more creative. Um, not just bold, but beautiful and unique. I mean, I think if you look at this new moon in Leo happening on this Tuesday, setting off this new cycle of creativity and self-expression, and perhaps romance for some. And then also Uranus going retrograde, which will uh, trigger at least short term our quest for individuality. I mean, this is really, uh, the week ahead is really a nice week to think about your own path, your own soul's path, your, your true expression. You know, who are you really as a person? Who do you want to be? What kind of mark do you want to leave on this world? Or another way, you know, to think about it is just what do you want to do for pleasure, for fun while you're here? What uplifts you and, and how do you want to share that with others? I mean, it's also about uplifting others. I think Leo can be a sign that shines its light out into the whole world and uh, makes us all appreciate light more, you know, and lightheartedness and fun and pleasure and art and beauty and music and these are all things that make life worth living i mean what 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 does it matter if we go to work and make money and even if we have food to eat if we do not have beauty if we do not have music if we do not have poetry if if we do not have um you know a certain kind of aesthetic in our living you know environment or beauty in our gardens you know beauty in ourselves you know whatever that means to you uh self-expression these these are the icing on the cake, so to speak. So think about that for yourself, and, and maybe the next few weeks ahead would be a good time for some self-pampering. Leo is very much a sign of self-pampering and honoring yourself, you know, like a, a queen or a king, as the case may be. And listen, you know, this doesn't mean that you want to, you know, treat other people like your subjects. Don't try that. that over well, um, especially which gets me to some of our other transits for this week that I want to highlight in this video, uh, and that is Mercury is going to be entering Virgo, and I believe that's on the very next day after the new moon. Yes, that's going to be on August 19th, Wednesday, that's 2020, uh, if you're watching this video later. And so with Mercury entering Virgo, we're going to be shifting our thought processes and our day-to-day -day activities to a more um, earth-based energy so we're starting to move from some emphasis on fire to even more emphasis on earth and there is a lot of earth energy anyway right now with uh, the outer planets in Capricorn many of them but Virgo calls us to get um, more organized more efficient more detailed to deal with detailed projects so the next few weeks ahead will be better for that 
and also the sun is entering Virgo later this week. And I think that's on Saturday, yes, Saturday, uh, Saturday, August 22nd. So it's a little bit more than a week after I'm filming this video for you, uh, but it is included in our forecast for this week. So on Saturday, August 22nd, the sun will enter uh, Virgo for this year, and that's a four week uh, time period that it stays in there. And so we're shifting a little bit from those royal energies of Leo. We'll still have that because of the new moon influence, but gradually, you know, starting at the end of this next week ahead, and then as the next couple weeks go on, we're going to be more and more focused on getting back to business, you know, getting organized, being more efficient, uh, dealing with those projects that are more uh, data orientated, tech orientated, detail orientated, you know, um, getting everything lined up and in its perfect place, or at least we'll be trying for that. Um, so I would say, you know, if you're going to do some self pampering and, you know, really be focused creatively, I would think that the next two weeks would be better uh, for that because as this Virgo energy becomes stronger, uh, we're going to be moving away from self pampering and, and more towards, um, you know, increase in discipline. But anyway, it's a good time to get started with that at the end of this week coming up. And also, Virgo is a great time to focus in on health and nutrition. This time the sun is in Virgo from um, August 22nd to about September 22nd. So, you know, look at your health habits. I mean, maybe you could tweak that a little. And, I mean, we are in the middle of a worldwide pandemic scare. I don't know why hardly anybody's talking about strengthening your immune system or relieving stress. I don't get that. I can only think that uh, people putting out these public service measures just don't care that much about us because if they did, surely they'd be reminding us to take care of our health. Um, anyway, you got to take care of yourself, okay? So take care of your health. Take care of your health. And, you know, that can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different people. Uh, Virgo in particular is a very... Um, health foundational sign and what I mean by that is it focuses on the basics the foundation of health diet hygiene nutrition and gentle exercise perhaps breathing uh, Virgo can also be a sign of energy healing and stress relief and actually many Virgos are very stressed okay because their nervous systems are sensitive and they can tend to be perfectionistic and we all can be like that by the way regardless of what your signs are in your chart that are emphasized when we're going through this passage of sun and virgo we all can be a little bit more perfectionistic which isn't a bad thing necessarily but don't let it be so intense that you know you set yourself spiraling into depression or you make yourself sick by compromising your system um, virgo on the bright side can teach us about the power of the mind and healing and how it is true, keeping our thoughts high, our vibrations high, wise, aware, uh, positive, yes, but more than that, wise and aware and tuning into the higher energies. The more we do that, the more healthy we will be. Um, when, when we're vibrating in that higher place, the only way illness can enter in is if that's our karma and something we need to experience in order to grow. I mean, actually, maybe that's the only way illness can enter in anyway, but I think sometimes we can bring it on ourselves even when it's not already our karma. And there's a lot of ways that can happen, but it doesn't happen if you are keeping your mind in that more calm and serene place, which is a little bit different than just thinking positively, I might add, um, because I've seen some people, you know, really work on thinking positively and they're doing it in a very sometimes uptight, aggressive, uh, contrived way, and that's all a strain on your energy field too. So uh, I'm not against thinking positively, in fact I'm very much for that, if you'd like to do that, that's great. Um, but there's something beyond, you know, out there and there's a field beyond, like Rumi talked about, Rumi, R-U-M-I, the poet, he talked about a field beyond good and evil. And I think that's true with our thinking. Out there, there is a field beyond positive and negative, and that field is the field of serenity, peace. That's where you want to, I think, ideally go into and cultivate in yourself during this time, this month ahead of Sun and Virgo. So anyway, that's a little highlight of some of the shifts happening this week. 
looks like a pretty good week. Um, the only thing to watch out for, I think, majorly, I mean, I don't know, the Uranus going retrograde this Saturday on the 15th could create some hiccups. It's hard to say. It's a very unpredictable energy. But I will say at the end of this forecast for this actual week on August 22nd, same day the sun enters Virgo, there's some pretty tough lunar energies. And these are just really for the day. They're very short term. But with that moon in Libra on that Saturday, again, that's August 22nd, 2020, it's it's making a whole lot of squares. Let's see, I wrote some down. Uh, early in the morning, it's going to square Venus in Cancer. Then a little later, it's going to square Jupiter in Capricorn. Much later in the day, it's going to square Pluto in Capricorn. Then it's going to oppose Aries in the evening and square Saturn in Capricorn. So a lot of tense cardinal energy. And if you don't know what that means, cardinal energy is uh, well, all those signs that I just mentioned, they're all being activated. And the cardinal signs are the movers and shakers. They're very dynamic. Um, I'm a cardinal sign, actually. And when the cardinal signs are stimulated in transits, uh, you know, it can be very tense and things can happen. Or, you know, we want to take action. We want to take action, but then we might get blocked with transits like these. So if that happens, well, remember, you know, the old axiom, this too shall pass. <laughs> okay. So this is a wrap for today's forecast. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. I'll have another forecast out for you next week. Uh, which, by the way, next week, the week ahead, you know, after this forecast, that would be the week starting, uh, I guess it'd be August 25th. That week looks pretty difficult. So please do tune in for that forecast, which will come out the Friday before. And if you're not already subscribed, well, if you like these forecasts and the other psychic work that I do, uh, please feel free to just subscribe so that you'll be notified of when you get these videos. Until next time. I'm sending you all the love in the world and bright cosmic blessings, fellow stargazers.